Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville is doubling down over his comments over white nationalism that he shared last night with our Caitlin Collins. Tuberville kept repeating that it's just an opinion that white nationalists are indeed racist, although the definition says so. CNN's Lauren Fox is on Capitol Hill with the very latest. Lauren, what are you hearing now? Yeah, I mean, Tuberville just continues doubling down on his comments. Originally, he made these comments weeks ago, basically arguing that white nationalists weren't necessarily racist. And he was pressed repeatedly by R. Caitlin Collins yesterday and then pressed repeatedly by reporters again today. Here's what he said. Explain why you continue to insist that white nationalists are American. Listen. I'm totally against racism. And if the Democrats want to say that white nationalists are racist, I'm totally against that too. But that's okay. not a democratic definition. The definition of a white nationalist well, is someone... Well, that's your definition. My definition it is, is the racism definition. bad. The, okay. definition, Next question. the, Next definition, question. the definition The definition Next is question. that the Next belief question. that the white racism race is superior is to all other races. Racism totally out of the question. So do you Next believe question. that white I'm nationalists are racist? Yes. If that's what a race is, yes. Thank you. But what's that your, is the definition. And he just continues to double down. And the fallout on Capitol Hill from Republicans is now that many Republicans are being asked by reporters, are white nationalists racist? And I talked to several Republicans, including Rick Scott of Florida, who said, absolutely, that is the definition of a white nationalist, that they believe that the white race is superior to other races. You also heard from John Thune, who I spoke to just moments ago. He is the Republican whip, and he was pressed by reporters reporters whether or not he was going to talk directly to Tuberville about his comments. He said he had no idea what Tuberville was actually trying to say. He said, just to be clear, though, there is no room for white nationalists in the Republican Party. I pressed him on whether or not there was room for white nationalists in the military. He said, no, not there either, making it clear that he wants to put this to bed. He does not want this to become a broader question of whether or not Republicans are sticking with white nationalists. Sarah? Yeah, hard to put it to bed when you keep getting those same answers from Tuberville. Thank you so much, Lauren Fox, for that update. Appreciate it. It's obviously not an opinion. It is a fact that white nationalism, uh, white nationalists are racist. Why do you think it is so hard for Senator Tuberville to be clear about that? So it's interesting and good to see you, but you know, here's what's happening. So if you listen to the full interview, for somebody that claims to be very clear spoken, and I'm just going to tell you how I feel, he is twisting his words around to please everybody. So he's trying to pretend like, well, white nationalists are Americans. If they're racist, I'm against racism. But, you know, it's only your opinion that white nationalism is racism. So that way ev he's trying to create a situation where everybody can hear what they want to hear. Because honestly, there is a constituency of white nationalists that you don't want to tick off, evidently, in some of the Republican primaries because they're loud on the Internet or they have the ear of you know certain people. And so I think he is trying to twist his words and he does not want to alienate. It's a lot of what you saw, frankly, with Donald Trump, where he didn't want to alienate the Proud Boys and stuff like that. So it's a really, really concerning thing. Let's be very clear. White nationalism it's not just racism, it's deep racism, and it has no place, in my opinion, in any political party, and it certainly has no place in the United States military. Historically, the GOP likes to embrace that it is pro-military, and the Pentagon itself has said, yes, there is a problem with white nationalism, there is a problem with extremism in its ranks. What does it do to the Republican Party's historic support of the military for it to be home to a senator who is saying something like this. By the way, I want to be clear. It's true. There is extremism in the military. Now, I'm not, it's not necessarily at a greater rate than all of the country, but I've seen people, like I, I've seen people tell me, I've had people tell me QAnon theories that are wearing the uniform of the United States military. Um, and so, yes, we have to weed that out. Just like when I joined the military, I had to say, I am not a member of the Communist Party or any party or any group that seeks to overturn the United States government. And so what it does for the historical Republican support, they can pretend like, continue to pretend like they are the pro-military party as they oppose 
you know, U.S. support to Afghan or to uh, Ukraine, which actually is preventing the United States military from having to get involved directly against Russia. You know, as they hold up nominations because of a difference on abortion opinion, uh, and and have these members of the military that are relying on their promotions for better pay, for better leadership, the military that needs them to fill these positions, holding them up for politics. So, look. There's plenty of criticism that can go around in terms of politicizing the military. In this case, it is the Republicans, or more specifically, Tommy Tuberville, that's doing exactly that. So he, all of this is spawning, sort of spinning off of the fact that he is unilaterally holding up these military nominations, right, over the Pentagon's abortion leave policy. How problematic is it? And we're seeing this really affect right, the nomination for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. How problematic is it for Republicans that this GOP senator who cannot condemn white nationalism as racist is holding up the nomination of an African-American general to be chairman of the Joint Chiefs? Well, I think it's quite problematic. Now, I've kind of come to believe that when it comes to base politics, there's really nothing somebody can do that's going to change the support among the base, unfortunately. Um, but you can chip away at it. And people, I think, especially Alabama's got a pretty significant military uh, presence. There's going to be a lot of people that are actually personally affected by this. I mean, look, I don't even think anybody like Rand Paul, uh, who is very anti-military, quite honestly, has taken it this far before. And so this is damaging to the Republican brand. It's damaging to Tommy Tuberville's. I, I guess he, he can you know, win over some of the, uh, I, I, he's probably already won over the anti-abortion folks, but maybe he can win them over even harder. But even the Republicans in the Senate are saying this is insane. This is insane. I mean, we can't talk about competition with China and blame President Biden for some lack of competition with China and then hold up the nominations of the military that is actively every day preparing for, hopefully not actually engaging in, competition or conflict with China. That's the only way to prevent it. And Tommy Tuberville's doing great damage to that. Yeah, and those are some of the actual nominations that we're talking about, right, when it comes to the Navy and the fleets that are dealing with the China threat. Congre uh, former Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.